For this assignment, you'll be creating four five series value scales, one for each pen and ink technique. Your scales need to be one inch in height, five inches in width, so that each series or block is exactly one inch by one inch. Label each scale with its corresponding technique. Let's get started. For today's tutorial, we're going to be working with pen and ink. So you will need to use a pen. It doesn't have to be a black pen, um, preferably a gel pen or a, I like a felt tip pen. Um, and I'm going to show you the differences in those. Now this is a ballpoint pen and this is probably what most pens in your home that you're going to find are going to be. There's nothing wrong with using this, it just can become quite frustrating. A ballpoint pen is um, you know, best for writing, not the best for working with um, you know, creating art. Um, it's, it's a little bit harder to work with and it just, I mean, it just it doesn't flow as easily as a gel pen or a felt tip pen. And then this is the only gel pen I could find in my house. And it's actually kind of going out. Uh, but this is going to be something that's much easier to work with. And these are the types of pins that we use in the classroom. So if you don't have a felt tip pin, this is what I recommend. If you don't have that, you're okay to use a ballpoint pin. And then a felt tip pin is like almost like a marker. And it, it just very nice smooth marks that you can create with it. I just enjoy these. Uh, also, if you're a lefty, it dries quicker, and so it's not going to smudge. I'm a lefty, um, so I have complicated issues with pins or even pencils. A micron pin, and these are those really fancy artist grave. Uh, you'll see on here it says archival ink. I mentioned uh, archival paper when we did the chiaroscuro method. And so this is a really good high quality ink. Uh, it is also a felt tip pen. They come in um, different weights. This is a 03, so it's a little bit larger. They go all the way down to a double zero. Uh, and it's very thin. I like this, this type of pen. Again, just a really nice controllable pin. It, it, it'll work quite well. Again, you don't have to have this. Uh, you know, a felt tip or a gel pin would be your best bet. Again, you can work with a ballpoint pin, and if you have a micron, use it. Before we can get started with our uh, pen and ink, we are going to first set up our value scales. So I told you that they need to be one inch in height by five inches in width, and there needs to be four of them. So I'm going to line this up. I'm gonna make one right here in between the, the two and the three, give an inch space. Here's my second one. Between the five and the six, give an inch space. Draw in between the six and the seven. Yours doesn't have to be this fancy. It just makes it easier for you guys to see on mine. Every other inch, I'm, I'm making a one inch mark. And then, using the inch side, lining that up with the zero, I'm gonna draw to the five. I'm gonna start by making a little tick mark in between each space, or each inch. Do this on each one, it'll just make things go by a lot quicker. Starting with the zero, draw to the five, make a little tick mark where each inch is.
draw our top lines. And you don't have to measure here. We already know where that last space is. Finishing that off. Continuing those lines. Actually, I'll wait till the end to do that part. Let's do this. The reason why I want to wait is because I can just mark all of them all at the same time and not have to do that for each individual one. We could do that here too if we wanted to. Line this up on the side in between those spaces. Remember this needs to be an inch. So you might need to remove your ruler. They don't have to be perfectly drawn. I want to see some effort. This is what I meant. So line this all up and they should all be, if you did yours like mine, right there in between those spaces and we don't have to sit there and measure each one out. And this is just to set it up. We're using a pencil. I forgot to mention that. Use a pencil to do this. Before we start with the pen, we want to use a pencil. Okay. Everything doesn't have to be perfect. You just need four value scales with five spaces for each one. All right. Now we're switching to the pin. So for each one of these, you're going to do a different pin and ink mark. And I'm going to work in the same order as um, the introductory video. So I'm also going to label them on the side as we go. Our first one that we're going to do is hatching. And you are to uh, label these as well. So don't forget about that. Hatching is done through marks going in the same direction. Tiny marks, not big long lines going across. That's that's a line. Uh, hatching is just small uh, little marks going across. So again, I like to work, especially with pin, I like to work um, from the darkest value towards my lightest value. Pins you cannot erase, right? So they're permanent. So once you make those marks, um, they're on there. I highly, highly, highly recommend working from right to left, from darkest to lightest. So with hatching, let me zoom in here. With hatching, uh, you're going to start with tiny little marks. Doesn't matter what direction you choose. It could be horizontal, it could be diagonal, it could be vertical, but all those marks seem to be going in the same direction. For me, it's easiest to work diagonally. So I'm going to start over here. And I like to, to work with these little, little, little tiny marks. Notice these are little tiny marks. They can overlap each other. But they're all going in that same direction. And this is our darkest value, so we're going to add multiple marks on top of each other. And what I like about working from darkest to lightest is if it's not dark enough, we can always add some more to it, but it's harder to take away. So we can build it up, build it up, build it up. Oh, hello. Now, all of your spaces don't have to be going in the same direction, so we can... We can switch this up. I feel like that makes a pretty good dark value. If I need to, I'll always go back and add more. So I'm going to move on to the next one. And I'll, for this one, for a demonstration, I will go in a different direction. So I'm going to work uh, horizontally. And it's going to be a little bit harder for me. little tiny marks. Notice as I'm not drawing all the way across the square. I don't want to see that kind of mark on your paper. I will take off points if I see that. I want to see that you are working small strokes. I can tell. Working horizontally is kind of difficult. 
and this is our next lightest value. So I don't want to fill in as much. I want to see a little bit more white space in here. Looks a little bit lighter. So my next one's going to be even lighter. So less marks again. I'm going to switch back to my diagonal. I like it better. Small strips. All going in the same direction. Pretty good. My next one, a little bit lighter. So more white space in here. Looking pretty good. And then my last one, mostly white. I look at this and I if I want to be nitpicky these two right here there's subtle differences in them so what I can do is build this one up to where I see hardly any white in here so I'm gonna get rid of a lot of that white space in there really darken that with that hatching you'll see it gives it a texture And then I can work with this one a little bit more, darken it just a little bit more. And it will set it apart a little bit more. So we have our darkest to lightest with hatching. Do not leave this last one white. Although it is your lightest value, it still is going to have marks on it. So make sure that you place those marks in there. Our next one that we're going to work on is cross hatching. Cross hatching is very similar. It's just exactly what it says, hatching but crossing. So you are crossing in at least two directions. So you'll start off, again I like working from darkest to lightest, not only um, with pencil, also with I'm sorry, with pen, but also with pencil. I'm a lefty. We tend to, um, you know, smudge things around. And, and with pens, again, uh, if we were been working from left to right, you would see probably a big old smudge across my paper. It's just the problems with being with being a lefty. Again, those of you out there, you understand. So I'm going to start off with my hatch marks first. And a good way or a good um idea with this. I had a student mention this a few years ago and I thought what a wonderful thing to say is you could if you want this to be your darkest value this would be two crosses this would be three four five and six so six directions crossing. So I'm going to start off with my hatch marks and then I'm going to go in an opposite direction. I want to move them around they're not nice and neat. It's not uniformed we're not making you know perfect crosses. They don't have to be X's. We're just crossing over. Try to avoid, I'm already kind of messed up over here, but try to avoid, um, you know, coming out of the, the box. I really want to build this up so I can go in a different direction again. Now I'm working horizontally. As long as you have this placed in two different directions, you're fine. We really want to get rid of that. And now I'm going to work vertically. Again, I don't want to see really long marks. Now I'll go back to what I was doing earlier. So when you make these marks, you place your pin down 
pull your pin, lift up. It's not one continuous line. We're not coloring in the space. We're not working like that. We're placing our pin down, drawing our mark, lifting back up. Placing pin down, drawing our mark, lifting back up. Same thing goes with hatching. It's kind of hard to see in a video. I'm going back and following those same patterns I did because I really want to get that colored in there. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to move on to my next one. Place my hatch marks on here first, and then I will switch over to cross hatching. Switch to a different direction. And you don't have to switch directions, I mean, at least twice, uh, but you know, it's just. I feel like that looks pretty good. My next one. I think that's good for right now. Notice when I lay down my hatch marks that they're getting more and more and more spaced. And then our lightest value. Now just because your line doesn't doesn't cross over something, it doesn't mean that it's not a, ha a cross hatching mark. Don't think that I'm going to sit here and say, well, this one, you know, doesn't have any lines over t over it, so that's a hatch mark in your cross hatching. It doesn't work like that. I don't really want to see X's, um, you know, even though they kind of are X's. I don't want to see you purposely making X's uh, on your paper. And so there we go. And you could maybe argue that these two are pretty close to each other. So if I really wanted to kind of darken this up a little bit, uh, I could come back in here and add some, some darker values. Make it appear darker. Move on down to our third one, scumbling. And this can be is considered by my students one of their favorites. And this is made through tiny squiggly marks. Uh, the more controlled, the darker the mark is going to be. The more loose you are with it, the lighter it's going to be. Now, you're making a circular motion, but you're not keeping that pin constantly on uh, your paper. You're kind of lifting it up, so it's sporadically hitting the paper. Um, and it, what I mean by this, so when it's controlled, I'm staying and I'm working in one little space. I'm working in little squiggly lines. I'm working to the left and I come around my, to the right. I'm overlapping. I'm going to try to draw really slow so you can kind of see. 
and I am keeping my pin for this dark value placed on the paper. It's not really hovering over, but I'm not making exact circular cir circles. Um, I don't want to see this type of a thing. This is not what I want to see. Uh, and I do see that a lot that's more cursive um, and that's a spiral that's not uh, scumbling. A scumbling is more of a texture we would use for a hair, for beards, um, that type of thing. Not to say that you couldn't use it in other places, but it's, it's generally for that kind of um, texture that you're trying to create. So I'm just controlling my pin, keeping it in a small space. Um, less control would be working in much larger space. So this is a less control. More control down here, much finer, darker details. Less control is going to make a lighter uh, mark. And I'm going to go back over top of that so it's not a big deal. And you really can't necessarily go wrong with this. You're just, you know, making all kinds of squiggly lines but you're working in different directions. You're switching every directions. You're not keeping it, you know, all circular going to the right. You're really switching it up. You're working all over that space. So you're darkening that value. All right. For our next one, we want to have more space in here. So this is where I start to lose control. Not very much. Making, making my circles a little bit bigger. And I'm lifting that pin. So sometimes it's on the paper, sometimes it's not. And it really helps you, um, you know, lighten the values in there and work with the, the technique. So a little bit less control. You're able to see more white space, which makes it appear lighter. This is a pretty easy one to mess with. See how my circles are not always the circles, they're more lines, they're, they're sporadic. So fill out that space at first and then we can kind of come in and darken it. And you'll notice I kind of work around the perimeter of the object first or the, the space that we're working in and then I kind of bring it towards that center. Next one, much less control. That was not good English. Less control. <laughs> less control, more white space. Notice it's not really circular. It's just a bunch of little, you know, zigzaggedy, you know, um, all over the place. It's not necessarily, not zigzaggedy, that's a bad word too. Uh, it's just random, okay? and. These two look very similar to me, so I'm actually going to add just a little bit more here. And add a little bit more here to kind of variance those. And the last one, well, the least amount of control that you can possibly have. Notice my pin doesn't always make contact. And then the most tedious one, pointillism. Well, not pointillism, stippling. Pointillism is a form of stippling. Stippling is um, done with dots. So if you're working with a ballpoint pin, it's going to become frustrating. Um, if you are working, actually, I would like you to add over here on, you know, a part of your paper somewhere. Let me know what type of pin you used, whether it was a felt tip, a gel pin, a ballpoint pin. Um, you know, let me know so I understand. Um, but a ballpoint pin is going to become very frustrating because a ballpoint pin, you have to be moving the pin in order for the ink to be deposited. Uh, so when you are working with with stippling, um, it can, you know, it won't necessarily release the ink onto your page. Um, 
So hopefully you guys have some kind of a, a felt tip pin in your house somewhere or a gel pin that you can use. But stippling is all done through dots. And uh, you don't want the dots to start looking like hatch marks. So you need to keep your pin vertically. And it's kind of hard to see, so I'm going to tilt mine, but hold your pin vertically right above it, okay? For me, I, I can control a little bit more. And you're just making dots. Now, a lot of the times, and I'm going to do this little mistake on my paper just so you can see, but what will happen is you start making all kinds of noise. It sounds like a, a jackhammer because your hand's getting tired or you're getting tired, and stippling is tedious. Um, so I'm going to be looking to see that you took your time with it. Put it down. Maybe start with stippling and then come back. Uh, you know, do one square at a time, then go do the whole hatch marks, then work on the stippling, uh, and then go do the whole cross hatching, then come back and do the next one, the next one, next one. Um, it is time consuming. And what happens is when you start rushing or you start getting irritated or you want to be done, you start jackhammering and making all kinds of noise with the uh, pin. Um, which is going to kind of ruin the end of your pin. Um, and you're also going to start making what I call comets or hatch marks. And it's going to start to look like this. This is not stippling. This is hatching. And I don't want to see those kinds of marks on there. Now, occasionally it will happen. Um, but I don't want to see that as a continuation. I'm going to try to cover it up. This is our darkest value. I think stippling is such a cool um, technique. Yes, it does take forever, but it has a really awesome outcome. And if we were in school, we would be doing a, a pointillism project. I would be teaching that. And that's something that I might do as our uh, project for value. I, or I haven't quite decided what we're going to do. I do know that I want it to, maybe I'll let you guys choose between um, something like a graphite drawing of your choosing, um, trying to shade, add shading, or I might have you do something with pen and ink. I'll let you decide. And your hand does get exhausted, and you start to, I've noticed already that I'm gripping the pin um, harder, and so that actually exhausts my hand even more. So this would be one of those things where you can, you know, work on this, put it down, come back to it. Don't sit here and try to do this all in one sitting. It, it will become frustrating and it will become tiresome. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to just kind of pause this and I'll pick back up when I get towards the end. So as you can see, I've put these values from darkest to our second, darkest to our third, now we're going to add our last two values. This one's going to have the least amount of, second to least amount of dots on here. Make sure that they're sporadically placed around. Don't just sit there and work in one corner and work your way. And then your lightest value, just place them on here. A lot more white space in that area. Kind of going back and forth in between, making sure that they appear a little bit different. They look very similar, so I'm going to add some more in this space. Might have to add some more into this one.
And there we go. So this is the four pin and ink marks. Hatching, cross-hatching, scumbling, and stippling.